What's up everybody, David here, Mix Bus TV. Today, the stars of the show are the little but mighty <laughs> Yamaha HS3. Right there, you see them in white. I had these little monitors here in my setup, in my environment for about a couple of weeks, so they're broken in. I listened to a ton of music through them, and I also switched to them while I was mixing here and there, so I could give you my educated feedback on them, because many of you are looking for portable and affordable monitors. Special thanks to Sweetwater for sending these little guys so I could try them, give you my honest opinion, and make this video happen. Anything pro audio, home studios, professional studios, live instruments, hardware, software, Sweetwater always has the best deals. The link to the little Yamaha is gonna be in the info box down below. But let's get to the video. Let me tell you more about the HS3. As always, if you haven't already, please go check out the new website, MixBestTV.com. In there, you will find all the mix and mastering courses available on many different genres, start to finish, and a new one is gonna be added soon in a couple of weeks. Also, check out Bella Kelly's new single, Goodbye, is available on all platforms and also here on YouTube. If you wanna access the exclusive videos here on YouTube, click the join button, become a MixBestTV member. You also get mixed consultations. Let's talk some specs first. The Yamaha HS3 are the smallest in the extremely successful HS line of monitors by Yamaha. But just because they are the smallest doesn't mean that they cut corners. In fact, the little HS3s come with a high performance class D amplifier, a sturdy MDF cabinet and the proprietary twisted flare port technology on the back, which is designed to give you more bass extension without the turbulence of a rear ported monitor. The woofer is a 3.5 inch and we have a 0.75 inch dome tweeter. The frequency response given is 70 22 but is a minus 10 db so keep that in mind because usually the frequency response is given between plus or minus 3 db so that's a bigger swing but we are talking about an extremely compact monitor and they are extremely affordable so the fact that the frequency range goes even down to 70 with a 3.5 inch speakers is definitely impressive nonetheless but of course these are meant to be very near field monitors great for production especially if you are on the go absolutely perfect with a laptop setup like I did here you can put everything in a bag and go and I will talk later about their overall frequency response and what I think of them but I found these monitors being extremely useful for two things even in a big setup like mine number one finding the right level of vocals in a mix and two assessing your top end the Twitter is extremely fast on transient is detail enough to give you all the information that you need to assess your top end, but it's not fatiguing at all. I also found their sweet spot is quite wide. I could move my head and left or right here on the desk, and I didn't hear any weird face shift, which happens very often when the Twitters are extremely directional and you move the head a little bit and you just have a completely different picture of your mix and you don't know what to trust anymore. Is it in the middle? Is it a little less? Is it a little back or forward? Which one is the truth, right? These have a quite wide and even sweet spot. A small monitors like this will always force you to focus more on the mid range, the money range, because the top end is extended, but it's not as extended, right? And the low end is definitely not as extended even compared to an 8 inch. So by nature, monitoring on this or switching from a bigger monitor to this will give you immediately a different perspective and make you focus and pay attention of what's in the mid-range, what's in the mono channel, because of course you're gonna place a small monitor, near field monitor, narrower than any other system, so things are not gonna sound that pretty, and they're not gonna sound that wide if the mix is not wide. These are quite unforgiving. If your mix or even your rough mix or your production, just the sound selection for your song, doesn't quite gel, they will tell you. That's one thing that I really like about 
them. We can take a look at the back and we can see at the top we have the twisted flare port. We talked about this. This design helps with turbulence and helps with more focused low end. We also have a two switches EQ on board. We start with room control, which is your base control, zero minus two and minus four in case you have to adjust your base response, either based on your taste or because you're placing the monitors in a non-ideal room, sometimes boundaries. If you're close to the wall, the base can be inflated a little bit, so you want to trim it down. And we also have a high trim, a zero plus two and minus two for the top end. Personally, I tried all the combination and granted that I'm in a professional room, but I liked everything flat. Tried to boost two, I tried to attenuate two. I'm very sensitive to the high frequencies, so if the monitors are really close to me, I tend to uh, lower either the level of the Twitter or shave off a little bit of top end. These were absolutely perfect flat. I really love them. That's what I mentioned at the beginning, why I really like the top end, and that was flat. So try that first. We also have plenty of connection, line one and line two. Line two is prosumer RCA connectors if you want to hook them up to a TV or anything else. And the line one is the professional connector. Both left and right input in a form of a combo XLR quarter inch jack are placed in one monitor where you also find a power cable and an on off button. And then you have the two black and red connectors to output the signal to the second monitor. They come with the connecting cable which is already pre-cut as you can see here and what you do is of course you connect one end for each side matching colors of course like this and of course the other end goes to the other speaker in front on the main monitor for me the left monitor we have a mini jack headphones output and of course the power button again and the volume in front which also have this white ring light around it, which is pretty cool. So about the response and overall experience, I find these monitors surprisingly revealing and extremely clear. Pretty surprising is how fast on the transient they are. I already said I love the Twitter, but the driver is also quite surprising in how fast it is, especially on kicks. So I would never say that a monitor is better for a certain genre versus another, yet there is a reason as to why certain producers or certain mixing engineers that mix one genre more than another prefer certain monitors and you see them more often let's put it this way i was particularly impressed anytime that i played any dance electronic music techno music and even hip-hop if you're not expecting to hear 32 of course they are very clear and another thing that also surprised me was how well i could hear the effects so the uh, reverbs and delays in the background especially if i listen to my mixes which are many many layers of hidden effects i was actually surprised i could pick up pretty much everything the stereo image is not hyped at all actually I want to say it might be a little narrower than what I was expecting, which for me is a good thing because it makes you work really hard. I played not just my mixes, I played a ton of mixes here and you could tell the one that weren't really that wide and well mixed in 3D in space and width. They were kind of lacking and sounding a little behind on these monitors while the mixes that are mixed well, they still held up and well, extremely well represented in the stereo field that tells me the monitors are functioning right if something is off and you don't like your mix that well in those monitors it's because your mix is lacking something so i was actually very pleased with this the limits of these monitors are of course they are not so extended in the low end they're not full range they're not even close to full range but that does not mean you can't mix a bass or you can't mix a kick now at first when i started listening various genres on this i was under the impression that those tracks that have a lot of muscle in the low mid-range so usually rock metal heavy industrial that range wasn't that clear and to some extent i still feel that way it's just the nature of a driver that is this small but i also notice another thing 
because they are so small, where do you place them plays a huge role. And this might sound counterintuitive as the bigger speakers is more volume, the room is get excited more, which is true. But the boundaries, what's around the monitors air, where they are placed, plays a big, big role in, especially in that range that I found them being a little behind in some way. And so I noticed that if I place them here, because that shelf there has nothing underneath. It only has four feet to keep it up. So underneath is empty. They were muddier in that area than if I placed them on a solid base. Like for example, I placed them, silly enough, I placed them on the rack right here next to me with my laptop and the rack is full of gear and it weights probably, I don't know, 90 pounds. So they were decoupled, so to speak, and they sounded a lot better. So that's something to keep in mind. If you can put them on a base that is solid and heavy and it doesn't resonate, it's a lot better. Actually, even you know, normal stands. I keep the near field here because I don't really use them for mixing, so I don't really care, but you get the idea. Oh yeah, this too. They are loud as hell. <laughs> I was in disbelief. I cannot turn my volume all the way up. That's how loud they are. They are little tiny monsters. And you know, it's important, especially when you're producing, you want to feel a little kick. You want a little volume to see if the song is exciting. Yes, we. I personally mix at a extremely low volume. Like I can tap on the table, right? But especially for producing or if, especially if you are on the go and you don't have like the perfect room, you want some volume. And these things were very impressive. Like they are hell allowed. I think this is it for this video. This is what I think about the little Yamaha HS3 power monitors. These are in white, but they also come in black with a classic white cone. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. And again, special thanks to Sweetwater. If you want to grab these or anything else audio related, the link is going to be in the info box down below. Make sure you check out Bella Kelly's new song, Goodbye, stream, watch the video, share it around. And if you haven't already, go check out the new website, mixbestv.com for all the mix and mastering courses. And of course, all the other services services, mixing, mastering, consultations, and private lessons. Click the join button to become a Mixbus TV member, access the exclusive videos here. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Bell notification on. Stay safe. See you next time.